Buenas tardes a todos. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for allowing me once again this opportunity to address all of you today during our Unity Luncheon and letting me share some ideas and perspectives on our common goal of building a better Latino community and in doing so, building as well a stronger America. I would like, I would like to start with expressing my appreciation and gratitude to Margaret Moran, our LULAC national president, for her kind invitation, for, to all the national officer and state directors, special guests and friends that honor us today with their presence. Thank you all for being here and for contributing to the success of this annual convention in the great city of Orlando, a place very near and dear to the hearts of the people of Puerto Rico because all the close ties between the island and the Hispanic community of Central Florida, home to more than 800,000 fellow citizens from Puerto Rico. That's why instead of saying Orlando, Florida, we always said Orlando, Puerto Rico. <laughs> y de esa manera, le doy un saludo muy especial y muy particular a todos aquellos que nos acompañan desde Puerto Rico, especialmente aquellos que lo hacen año tras año. Mis saludos y mi respeto para todos ustedes. This is the fourth year in a row that I have had the honor of addressing LULAC members during a national convention. And yet, it's another of several opportunities I have had to participate in the many jobs and service fair that this organization has promoted across the nation. As Puerto Rico Secretary of Labor, I applaud the particular initiative of LULAC to help promote working opportunities for Hispanic Americans and for all Americans. This is precisely what is our organization is about. It is about, about uniting our efforts to contribute our best values and best practices, and why not our human resources, so that we can start building a more promising future for our communities, our cities, our state, and our nation as a whole. It is LULAC's imperative to establish a solid and united Latino voice so that the issue that truly concerns all of our people continue to receive the attention they deserve at the national level. And it is also our duty as members of this organization to increase our individual participation in all aspects of our social environment, in all political decisions, and in all issues of local, state, and national concern. Because after all, what is good and fair to any group of Americans has to be good and fair for all Americans. It is no secret that, that we, the Latino community, are becoming ever more influential on the national scene and ever more capable of exercising our social muscle to make positive things happen to our community. The Hispanic community in the United States has grown in terms of economic and political clout because it has grown in numbers. We all know the statistics concerning our growth. According to the last census, we now make up 60.3% of the entire population. That is, that is almost four points greater than the 12.6% of the population represented by the African American community. And we are indeed the fastest growing minority group in the United States. Between the years 2000 and 2010, we have grown by 43%, and Latinos as a whole account for 56% of the overall population growth in the country over that same period of time. So we can safely say that Latinos are leading the great demographic transformation currently being experienced in the United States. We are a fast becoming a nation of, in which minorities will actually become the majority of the population very, very soon. And this, this of course, place Hispanics in an advantageous position over other minorities because of the size of our group. But it also places greater responsibility on our community, on our civic and political leaders, as well as on every one of us as active members of our communities from coast to coast and in the overseas territories. 
we have a greater responsibility because citizen participation is what allows our voices to be heard, our concerns to be addressed, and our voters to be counted. And it will not matter how much many Latino lives in the United States if our Hispanic brethren do not actively engage in the civil and political processes that affect us. In other words, the strength of our numbers in our numbers can only produce results if those numbers translate into the full participation of Latinos in the issues that concern all of us as a group and as Americans. In this regard, I have to emphasize and reiterate our full support to LULAC's Get Out the Vote initiative nationwide. And I seize this opportunity to call upon all of us to join in these great initiatives, especially during this election year. We need to become more active nationwide to get friends and family registered and having them go to the polls and vote. The more Latinos we add to the voting list through all the states, the greater our ability to move forward the particular agenda of our individual communities, as well as making the national Hispanic agenda a main priority in Washington and in our state's capitals. We cannot tackle immigration issues, the concerns about women's rights, housing and the education of our youth. We cannot properly deal with the labor and civil issues that struggle our people without the power of the vote. And I know that from experience. As a Puerto Rican American living in the US territory of Puerto Rico, I can tell you firsthand what not having the full power of the vote is really like. All of us and all of you that are registered voters in your states, you can fully exercise the right to vote for the president, the vice president, as well as for the senators and representatives that will create and approve the laws that affect you directly. That full participation in national elections give you the standing as a voter to demand action from the officials you send to Washington. But in Puerto Rico, that basic democratic right of all Americans cannot be exercised under the so-called territorial clause of our United States Constitution. Well, that's the reality, but there is hope. This particular election year, we in Puerto Rico will have a fantastic opportunity to express our preference and to have our voice heard in this regard. No, we will not be allowed to vote for the president, nor to elect voting members to Congress, but we will be holding a local plebiscite allowing Puerto Rican voters to make a clear and a solid determination as to the future relationship we will have with the nation that we have been a part since the year of 1898. It is a transcendental decision for Puerto Rico that will determine the next step in our process of self-determination. And it is also a decision that can set forth a new agenda for Hispanic throughout the nation with significant repercussions for the Hispanic vote Yet, the truth of the matter is that Puerto Rico's final decision as to its polit po future political status, whichever it may be, could either create a Hispanic state of the United States with all the social and economic consequences that would entail, or Puerto Rico could move in a different political direction with equally significant social and economic consequences for Puerto Ricans on the island and in the states. As such, I invite all members of LULAC to get really involved and have their individual communities to pay special attention to the results of the upcoming November plebiscite in Puerto Rico. Because once again, this is not an issue that not only addresses the concerns of a particular Hispanic American community in the Caribbean, but it's also an issue of the civic rights that should be enjoyed equally by all citizens living in our American democratic society. Inst <laughs> Institutionally, LULAC has always served as a sounding board for those concerns. It has always supported the right for self-determination of our island citizens. Since 1929, LULAC has lent a helping hand to Puerto Rico on these and other initiatives, such as including Puerto Rico in President Obama's jobs bill, in the national health care reform, 
extending to our employers federal credits that are allowed in other states, calling for equal treatment in Medicare and Medicaid benefits, and so many other matters. So LULAC Health has been significant in moving forward our agenda in Washington and beyond. Remember that Puerto Rico is a Hispanic American community that actually lacks the power of the vote at the federal level. And it has been through strong partnerships, such as the one we have with LULAC, that we have been able to overcome some of those civil rights limitations. We remain eternally grateful to LULAC for that support, and we shall continue welcoming that kind of partnership when working for any good cause. To us, there is no doubt that LULAC's vision has always gone beyond achieving greater political clout and civil equality for Latinos. It has made a strong stand nationally to ensure that our democracy becomes ever more representative for all Americans, wherever we may reside under our flag. So as we move further into the second decade of this 21st century, and especially in these election years, it is imperative for us as Hispanic American to let our powerful voice be heard by pushing the Latino issues into the national spotlight and, and rallying and rallying around Puerto Rico's case for self-determination is not exception. It is rather an exceptional opportunity for the League of United Latin American Citizens to become ever more united under a truly an American common cause. And I finish telling you that do never forget what President Obama once said, and I quote, America is stronger when everyone has a seat at the table and a shot at the American dream. Muchísimas gracias. Que Dios bendiga a la comunidad hispana. Que Dios bendiga a los latinos. Y que Dios nos ayude en Puerto Rico a lograr la igualdad que tanto anhelamos y necesitamos. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.